Welcome everyone to the Hadley School Committee Public Schools School Committee meeting for May 23rd, 2022. Do I have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. All right, do I hear a second? I think you're on mute, Christine. Is it on? Okay. Yes. So I second. All right, terrific. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. Um, we, it's the three of us. Um, I know Ethan Percy cannot make it today, and we do expect Paul Pfeiffer, um, so I imagine we'll see him uh, shortly. Um, Annie, any adjustments to the agenda? We do. Our wonderful friend, Chris Desjardins, is fortunate that he will be at town meeting tonight and where as a member of their school committee. Um, so here's Paul joining us now. I'll come in. I'll go ahead um, and make him, uh, make him a co-host. That'd be great. So I, I, and I can remind us in the order after each thing, um, I would like for Chris to do all of his reports first, which would be starting with the business manager reports, and then he'll discuss and request a vote on breakfast and lunch prices for next year. And then I'd like to uh, move on to the Euro Europe field trip. Uh, Jason Burns is here to present that and the packet is linked into your agenda so that he can go about his business and be with his family. And then we'll just go back to the remaining items, the reorg, capital planning and facilities update and the first reading and then school committee reports. But as I said, I'm happy after each thing to remind us where we need to be. That's all right. After public comment, we would start with business manager reports. Great. And Annie, um, I think only hosts can make someone a co-host. Okay. So, so let me doing that. take care of that for Paul. Yeah. Great. And I'll go ahead and initiate public comment. So it's, um, uh, it's uh, that time for a member's center, um, no more than three minutes. And um, uh, we um, are not obliged to respond to anything that's brought up in public comment. Um, but we, of course, we will factor it into uh, future discussions. So if you're interested in making a public comment, go ahead and raise your digital hand and we will call you in the order in which we see your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, we will go ahead and proceed with the agenda. And uh, first up, is the business manager report. And so, uh, Chris, are you there? I am here. Well, there I am. Okay. Um, <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So first up, I have the expense report from the regular budget. Um, at this point in time, you, you'll see a lot of accounts over and a lot of accounts under. I mean, as we move through the year, obviously these things start to, uh, differ a little bit from what we expected them to be. Um, so really at this point in time, what I tend to do is I look at the bottom line, you know, where are we? Um, and at this point, we still have about a million three left um, to get us through the rest of the year. Um, I anticipate payroll is probably gonna be around a million dollars um, for what we have. We have that big summer payroll that, that um, obviously hits in mid June. And uh, we have a number of other ongoing projects that we're going to finish up as well. Um, but <clears throat> we're in great shape as far as the budget goes. Um, we have no issues whatsoever. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions about particular lines in the report. No questions for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, would you like to move on to the next one? Yes, please. Okay, so we have the grants report. Um, I added Another grant, so as you can see, this page is getting a little bit tighter, um, but you can also see that at this point in time, the grants are getting spent down a little bit more. Um, items like the ESSER 2 and ESSER 3, we can obviously roll into next year, as well as the circuit breaker account, and we will certainly roll that amount over. Um, the rest of the grants, basically the, these are grants that it's just going to take until the end of the year to finish up. Um, items like the Title I, we have to wait for that big June uh, payroll to go through and that will 
basically use up the remaining $27,000. So, um, but, uh, you know, spending them down. And as always, we will spend them down right to the penny, um, either this year or if they're multi-year grants before the grants run out. Um, any questions on the grant reports? This might be something for the future. If there is a way, Annie, to demarcate which ones do roll over. I know there's a note there for Circuit Breaker, but the other two, and also which ones are replenished um, for a next year. Maybe it's a simple asterisk that just has us um, able to wrap our minds around that. Sure, we can use a. Um, okay, that's Chris's cat's joining us. Um, we can use a. Uh, we can certainly, as you said, as simple as an asterisk to indicate that uh, they're grants that roll over. Um, yeah, and the uh, and we could even do a, an asterisk, single or double, depending on the fiscal year by which they have to be spent down. So we have to spend down S or two before S or three. Just a reminder for people, because this has also been a lot of discussion, even nationally. ESSER is some of the COVID relief money that we talked about back in September when we surveyed the community, uh, parents, and we surveyed uh, our staff and our faculty. And one of their top priorities, in addition to providing social and emotional supports for students, so we are using ESSER money to fund the SEL coach position. But people also talked about the importance of upgrading facilities. And um, so we are very consciously have set aside money in those grants to assist us with making facilities upgrades. We'll also be working with the town on that, but I just wanted to remind the public that this is a conscious decision. It is not in any way a signaling that this is money that isn't needed. It's us trying to make sure that we carefully partner with the town when the, town, when the time comes. And that money will not be enough to cover that remember we had a facilities audit that said over the next decade, $9 million of improvements, which is certainly a lot less expensive than purchasing a new skill, school building, but that's what we've earmarked a lot of that money for. I just wanted to remind the public of that. Any, I suspect that a lot of um, schools are thinking along the same lines. Um, and I noticed um, in the um, school super, uh, I think it was actually school committee members, uh, there was a note that ESSER 2, you can apply for an extension to the extended time we already have. I don't know if you got one of that. If you haven't, I can find it and send it to you. But I think it's like another 18 months you can request from the state, which is probably really important when you're talking about substantial upgrades to buildings or new buildings. Yes, Chris has been right on top of that all along with the grants office and making sure that anytime that it makes sense for us to have that extension. And I would say that school departments that are able have definitely earmarked money for facilities improvements. There are school departments who are using ESSER funding to offset operational costs. We have not done that except for investing in a, in a coach. And I would argue that um, I'm glad that we are not doing that, right? Because that creates a huge funding cliff when those one-time funds are gone and the operational costs continue. So there are towns that are in school districts that are using them to fund salaries and other things, but these monies are one-time infusions of cash that will be gone. And so if you can avoid doing that, which we have, so we're using our typical revenue sources, grants, local contribution to fund ongoing operational costs and looking at ESSER to fund one-time monies matched with one-time costs is the goal. Makes sense. Are there any other questions from the committee members on the grants report? Uh, no, I think it's a good idea. I, with all these new grants, it's hard to keep track of what does what. Um, I, I think, Annie, you should push for a second page. I mean, I'm impressed you filled one page, but two pages would be really impressive. Yeah. Good luck. I will make the font smaller to keep it to one page. So. <laughs> no, there's, no, there's some no. weird thing between me and Chris. It's hard, awesome. hard enough, already really hard to see. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, great work. Terrific. Okay, and the last item we have is the uh, revolving accounts report. Not a heck of a lot of change really uh, from last month to this month, a little bit of a nice bump up in the lunch account. Um, I, I was told by Dee, and I know this is true because I've co-signed a number of the checks, 
um, that the student activity account had a lot of expenses in the month of May. So we can expect that account balance to drop um, when I report the next one to you. Um, and school choice, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't use any in the month of April. So that's just our regular monthly receivable that, that added to the balance. Um, so, I mean, it's nice to see all of the revolving accounts having positive ba balances at this late in the year, something that unfortunately we have not seen for several years. So it's good to have them back. So Chris, I know this will bleed into maybe the next conversation, but the lunch money we're getting that 166, is that all government money? At, at this point, yes, it is. Yeah. And do you, I can't recall, how much do we spend on an average annual basis on lunch? Oh, um, well, I can tell you pretty quickly, actually. So if you can just hold on a second. I'm just preempting that next conversation because it, it, it I, I'm assuming then the government subsidy is ending for 2023. It's still in play, Paul. I feel like I'm guessing at around 150, Chris, but I could be okay. wrong there. But um, it's so it's still in play. There are no guarantees, but it's still it's it's quite popular. If it were to continue and we would see that that revolving account right now, we're assuming that it's going to go away. And then you'll see what you're accustomed to, which is the lunch account. Right in the red. But if the subsidy were to continue and the lunch account kept building, remember in the facilities audit, and um, Christine, I'll make sure you get a copy of that that we went over at the last meeting, there were plenty of things in the cafe capital expenses. So that's one of the, that would be a reasonable use of those funds if the subsidy continued and that account grew to yeah. use it for capital expenses in the cafe. So I just looked up last year, what we had spent in the lunch account for the year was about $100,000, which is low. Um, typically in a typical year, we would have it in the 130 to $150,000 range, like Ann had said. Um, <laughs> but I, I really think they had a, a real struggle finding help. Um, and we've been really running on a skeleton crew there for quite some time. So what that does obviously is we're paying less in payroll. And, uh, and last, year was an, last year was an atypical year. It was, yeah. I just have a question. Yes. Um, the Hadley Kids account is, those are an accurate reflection now? Of the we balance. still have, it's an accurate reflection, but we still, it's in fall town meeting that we'll be asking for the correction. Oh, that's right. We talked about that. Oh. That won't happen until fall town meeting. That's right. You know, town meeting for then. All right. Thank you, Chris. Okay. And if I could go right to the lunch price item. Yes. I, I feel horrible about this. I, I really do because I went to Ann this morning and asked if we could add it to the agenda and I left the paper on my desk. Um, and so I, I truly apologize. I, I did not mean to do that, but I looked in my bag and I said, oh no, I, I left this year's and next year's proposed prices on my desk. So if we could do that in the June meeting, I would appreciate it. And, and again, I'm sorry. No worries. Can you give us sort of the, the highlights? I would say like 30 seconds. What are we... Uh, roughly looking to do? Um, well, I mean, obviously we, we have to increase the prices. There are minimum prices that we can charge for the lunches. And, and so what we basically did was we brought us up to the minimum and then rounded up, um, you know, to the next 10 cents um, just to kind of, you know, make it, um, you know, kind of future proof a little bit where, you know, maybe next year we might not have to increase it. Um, that would go for both the children's and the adult portions. I, I mean, the adults don't make up nearly as large of an amount as the students, but um, we have new prices for both of those. Um, I think if I remember correctly, when I met with Diane, we, we also, because the adults pay uh, food tax on their meals Recording as well. Recording in progress. And so what we ended up doing was just pricing it so that and I, if if I could just remember the dollar amount that was on the paper, but it was a round dollar amount rather than, you know, with the tax making it, you know, something like for lunch, $3.87. We just priced it so that with the tax, 
again, don't hold me to this because I just don't remember, but say an even $4 or whatever it was, you know, um, that will make it easier for the people paying. It's going to make it easier for the people getting the money, you know, in the line. So we kind of worked it out like that. Um, okay, great. I wish so I had that. No worries. We look forward to seeing that next month. Okay. Hey, Thank just you. one question on this, because I don't know, I don't know the full community benefit of having this be compensated or paid for for the last, what, two years, maybe longer. So with that excess we have, I understand there's capital upgrades. Can we, is there a value of um, using that to subsidize food next year, assuming the federal subsidy, subsidy doesn't continue? So rather than $4, it's $2. Well, we wouldn't be able to do that much because there are minimum amounts that we can charge and, and they're above $2. So, um, you know, we wouldn't be able to go any lower than that. Um, my, I mean, you know, the increases aren't huge, but I just remember when I came here, you know, about 10 years ago, we had a decent amount of money in the lunch account. And, you know, really food services, not just in Hadley, but in many districts, runs at a deficit. And so what happened was that that dollar amount shrunk and shrunk and shrunk until the last couple of years, we ended up kind of covering the lunch account with local money right. from our budget. And so, you know, when you see $160,000 in the account, be my, my advice, I guess, it would be to hold on to that because again, once we start getting, um, you know, costs outpacing the increases in, in what we're charging, that's gonna start to come down again. It's great right now because we're getting free lunch dollars for every lunch sold. And that's, we get more for free lunches than for lunches that the students pay for. Um, but once that goes back the other way, it's surprising how quickly that turns. So, but you know, that's, that's entirely up to you in the end. I really like the idea, Paul. I mean, people are really, um, with inflation, what it is and what their people are paying for gas. It's just, you know, when, they're going to be charged for their kids' school lunches. It's going to be a big hit. Um, if you're if you have multiple kids, you're you know you're looking at a substantial amount per day. So I really able to defray a little bit, but it may not. It it sounds like it's a nominal amount, anyways. So no, let's put a. I would say let's put a pin on it and save it for discussion when we come back um, in a month. Um, and you have the data, Chris, and, and maybe you could just crunch what that could look like if we were to choose that option. Sure. And, and yes, what it that. would look like if we if we weren't. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay, Annie. So Next is that. yes, I think that's all for you, Chris. So you, Chris. have yes. fun at annual town meeting. We're so jealous. We wish we, we, could, we could go with you. And now we are Thank on you. to Europe with Mr. Burns. Terrific. Hi, Jason. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the proposal. Um, so we're proposing a trip to Italy and Germany this time. Um, and it's nine days. We are opting to not do the extension because it's just too long. <laughs> um, and as I indicated, we're looking at switching companies, um, not because we dislike the company we've been working with, but there are aspects about traveling with them that we're like, we think this could be better. Um, and one of the things the kids said to us this time was we spent a lot of time on buses mm driving into the city so that we could actually start doing what we were going to do because you had to stay so far outside the city. Um, so in looking around, I found the company that we're looking he at here, World Strides. Um, and there were several things that I highlighted that I'll just highlight a couple of them that um, made them sound much more impressive to me. One is the fact that they guarantee you'll stay in the city. Um, which yes, of course it costs more, but you walk out the door and you're there. Um, so you're not spending two to three hours a day driving places. Um, also it realized we could then do things with the kids in the evening when the program for the day is done um, because we're not staying in the middle of nowhere. Um, the fact that they actually have programs to help 
families go on trips. Um, they have scholarship programs, they have relationships with other organizations that help kids fund, and they have payment programs that allow families to pay even after the trip is gone. Um, EF and all the other company, none of them do things like that. Um, so that was a big thing for me. And then there are programs with, like, I think they're called LEAPS, which stands for something, but I never remember what it means. Um, but what it is, is it's cultural immersion things. And I gave some examples there about like the gladiator school or cooking food. And that's also something we felt is missing with the companies we've used in the past where, you know, you race from one thing to the next and you see some French people, but you don't really get a sense of French culture. So I was glad to see that they're really much more into emerging, emerging, that's not even a word, emerging the kids. Oh, I see we have a visitor back there. Um, emerging the kids <laughs> uh, in the culture. Um, yes, the price looks higher and it is, but I think it's worth the money, but also there's things automatically included that once families add them, it ends up costing this much anyway. Um, like it's probably a good idea that everyone has the supplemental insurance just to be safe. That's not included with EF and the other companies. Um, the fact that they include tips, um, up front. So chaperones are not walking around with 4,000 euros worth of tips in envelopes. That, that would be nice. And also family aren't surprised the a month out. Oh, by the way, we need $200 to pay tips for everyone. So I, we just think, we just think it's going to be better. Um, and I hope you will uh, continue to support these efforts. Jason, thank you for this. Um, looks like a phenomenal trip. I wonder um, what kinds of things um, students whose families cannot afford this can do short of um, mm -hmm. taking out a loan. Are there fundraising efforts and other such things that we can undertake? Um, we can, we're always willing to talk with the kids about that. General fundraising is hard because it's such a small pool of kids. It's not very effective. The company does include um, a fundraising page, kind of like a GoFundMe mm -hmm. for each account. So where kids do a little campaign with their families and friends so that people can actually make donations directly to a student's account. Like we don't have to have money come through the school or anything like that. So there's that. And I'm always willing to, to try to put things together um, if that's something families want to do. Great. Thanks. Any other question for Mr. Burns? I had a question. Um, I guess kind of sort of tied to Humaris. I was just looking back at the beginning pages. I was wondering the grades. I see the grades. Number of students, 15. Um, just looking to ensure we've never had more students that have wanted to attend. That is 15 seem to be where you kind of max out or it doesn't even fill up. No, we had 20 this last trip. Um, low, I think we've had high as low 20s is the max. We've had as few as five kids. We've had as many as low twenties. That's basically where it maxes out. Um, the 15 is a complete guess because we have no way of knowing. So we're able to accommodate if you get 20 students. Oh yeah, absolutely. We can, okay. yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, we can take as many as want to go. Okay. Um, awesome. And as few or as many, what they do is they pair you with another school. So they always have groups of around 30. So if we had 30 kids go, we get to be by ourselves. Um, but yeah, so I put 15 because it was like in the middle. Sure. <laughs> uh, so that was really the only question. I, I, um, so that I, I agree with you, Mara. This is exciting. And thanks for taking the time to really kind of think about how to make the experience um, more valuable for the kids, right? Yeah. More cost efficient and they get to see more for their money, even if it is a little bit more money. Um, and I like, you know, kind of the opportunities to maybe reduce the cost. Hopefully some of our students are able to, to utilize some of that. And so I'd be curious how it went compared to the, to the last companies that you used, but it sounds, 
Sounds exciting. Paul, Christine, any questions or comments? None for me. It sounds like a great trip. I wish I could go. So I'm curious. So Jason, you said last time you had 20. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And did that trip get it all messed up with COVID, have to get delayed kind of thing? Uh, it did not. Um, okay. We were luckily able to go without a problem. Um, France and England didn't require testing for us to go there. We, we had the test to come back. And luckily, everyone passed the test, though we had okay. a kid become positive the day after we got back but <laughs> <laughs> so well, this, sounds like a, a, this sounds like a I, I like the idea of staying in town I, for me that makes a huge difference when i travel yeah. and then the, the other thing too i don't i don't know if you mentioned is that you could get college credit or high school credit yes i did i forgot credit. that it through george mason um george mason. no, no extra yeah. Cost money. At all. yeah yeah that looks no, cool. no that extra looks cost at all yeah i love it looks good Awesome. Hello. Hi, nice to see you. I, it's great to see you too. I missed you. Um, yeah, I'm just offering to be a chaperone if you ever need an extra one. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and Annie, do you need a vote on this? Okay. Yes, this is why the wonderful Mr. Burns is here giving us this time. He gets that vote, then he can start advertising. The longer they have to advertise the trip, the longer people have to raise money for the trip. Excellent. Do I hear a motion to approve the trip? So moved. Uh, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Back Thank you, back. Mr. Burns. Great. Thanks Thank for putting this so together. Much. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, Annie, back to the agenda. I think you can do the reorg now, and then we can just run through the items, and now we can just I think you can do your reorg now. Okay, yeah. terrific. Um, so it's that time of year where we have um, new member, Christine Pipchinski, who official welcome from all of us. I know Ethan wished he could be here for that. Um, we, it also means new uh, committee assignments. Um, I wanna start by saying I would be delighted to be your chair again if you were willing to have me team um, and probably don't need to vote on either each item um, one by one. Um, is that true, Annie? We could just proceed through these. Yeah, so you could, sorry, my, uh, I'm speaking. You can, you can do a slate of each thing and then just vote it all together if you'd like, that's fine. And I'll keep track of uh, nominations. Great. Um, I'd like to nominate Paul as vice chair. Um, I think especially this year without um, Heather having that, um, Constancy, I think Paul, you've been uh, vice chair for a while um, and I, I would welcome uh, your, uh, you being in that role. Um, something that I've been thinking about very recently, Annie, you and I haven't even talked about this is, um, I don't think I've served as the financial liaison um, or, and I think I have signed warrants before, but not in the officially restructured. So. I was thinking of, in light of the fact that there are some folks on the team who haven't served in different roles to make way for opportunities to serve in those roles, um, I would suggest um, that I'll go ahead and, even though it's not my favorite job, take on the finance role and the, and the warrant role. Uh, I know um, Paul is, sorry, Ethan is especially interested in serving on the policy committee and I was going to suggest also uh, Christine Pipchinski for that uh, role. I think, Christine, you'd really enjoy working with Ethan. And then um, Tara, last meeting when Heather um, asked to serve on CES, you also expressed an interest in the CES role. You might be willing to serve on the CES team. Again, it's a great opportunity to learn um, district leaders. And then, Paul, your steady hand on the capital team has really helped us make so much progress on the fields um, that I would really appreciate if you 
would continue in that role and help us in this next phase to really ensure that that happens well. Um, so those were some of the thoughts that I had and I, I welcome um, your feedback on it, um, Tara, Paul, and Christine. So, Humera, this is Paul. I'll just chime in and say thank you. I'm, I'm happy to, to continue serving on those roles, and and I'd, I'd love for you to stay as the chair. I think you do a great job. You really keep us on track, and you, you, you just handle it very well. So thank you for continuing to do that. Thanks, Paul. Um, I I concur. I have no problems. Humera, you've done wonderful as chair. Um, so I'm... Also happy for you to, con I'm not on mute, right? Um, I'm also happy for you to continue um, in that role and in that capacity as well. Um, I definitely don't have a desire to do warrant signer. I did that for too many years. So thank you for volunteering for that. I do appreciate that. Um, and, you know, certainly I, um, I would appreciate the opportunity to do CES as I haven't been able to. Um, I'm in the final year of my term, so I would appreciate the experience. But, um, you know, more importantly, I think that, you know, everybody, it's not about me and where I want to go and the experience that I want to have. I'm here to serve on the board, to serve the school and the students in the school. Um, you know, if we need to rearrange things or adjust things, I'm, I'm more than happy to go where people feel, you know, our committee members are, are, are best suited. Um, cause again, I, I'm, I'm happy to really serve anywhere and, and take on any sub policy, but I do firmly believe that it's, it's not my job to go where I want to go. It's, it's my job to go where I, where I'm the most fitting to go in order to be the most beneficial to the school committee for the students. So, um, I, I, again, I'm happy to do CES, but I'm happy to serve in a different role if there's opinions otherwise. Well, I, I trust you in any of the roles. I think you would be great in all of the roles. Um, and one thing I was hoping was that if I, I'm traveling and unable to make, say, a tri-board meeting or um, uh, any other, you know, can't actually, if there's a physical signing that has to happen that I'm not able to get to, can I count on you to be my backup on the finance liaison? Uh, to be the backup in any, any way you need that to be. Great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. No and Christine, I'm, um, I put forth that maybe you'd want to serve on the policy committee with Ethan. Thoughts on that? I'd be happy to. Um, but again, you know, I'm going to sort of defer to all of you seeing as this is my first time, so obviously I'm going to, um, anything you need me to do, uh, I would welcome. Initially, you know, I, well, thank, thank you. I, I initially thought that maybe the finance piece would be a good place for you to see where the, you know, the inflows and outflows of capital go and cash go, and that might be a good way to wrap your mind around the overall operations. But um, it is a lot and it can be tedious and you know maybe I'll let you get your feet wet with um, policy first and um, and then swap out another year. That sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. So here's the slate that I have that I think because we have the right nominations that if um, I can read the slate and then there can be a motion in a second to approve it if I got it right. Chair Humera, Vice Chair Paul, um, Warrant Signer, Humera Primary, Tara Second, Capital um, and Facilities, Paul, Finance Liaison, Humera, Tara uh, Second, Policy Subcommittee, Ethan and Chris, and CES Rep, Tara. Did I get that right? That is correct. Okay, so. Uh, Do I hear a motion to approve the slate um, that Annie just took us through? I'm moved. Okay. Do you have a second? Seconded. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Terrific. Great. Thanks, everyone. Easy. Yes. Now we're on to the next thing. But this works out well. The capital plan and facilities update. So um, 
the individual from Colliers who presented to you folks, they have a specialist in their organization that is their Mass School Building Authority Specialist or MSBA Specialist. And Paul, since you are continuing as the Capital Plan Facilities person, my question for you is they're trying to coordinate a meeting with me and Chris. I just wanted to know if you wanted us to take into account your schedule or do you just want us to give you a heads up? Do you want to be a part of that meeting? And there's no pressure to at all. This would again be Dan that you met, and Chip is what he goes by, Chip who presented at our last meeting and their MSBA person. When do you think it would be, Annie? Which week? Uh, this- so I that I don't know because I haven't. I emailed them, and he's trying to coordinate. I think they're pretty busy right now with that yeah. that person he wants on the phone with us. But if I know I'm working around your schedule, um, we can do that too. Annie you know, is the on Zoom. What's that? Is the meeting on Zoom or in person? Zoom. Oh, we would meet on Zoom. Yeah, it's it's virtual. I would say, Andy, um, keep me in the loop because I would like to make it. And I'm not sure if I can, though. I, I'm actually um, starting a new job next week. So I imagine I'll be oh. pretty busy. Congratulations, yeah. Paul. Yeah, thanks. Congrats. Do you want to share okay. a thumbnail about where you'll be? Um, so I work on offshore wind and I'm moving to a, a different offshore wind company. I was working for Shell New Energies and now I'm actually working for Total Energies, uh, a French company. Uh, developing a project off the coast of New York that could potentially serve Massachusetts. So yeah, I'll just uh, start next week. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Paul. So I'll, I'll copy you in on all the emails. If you can be there, if it works for yeah. you, great. If not, you'll be brought up to speed. I'll just stop, start copying okay. and try to schedule a time. Sounds Perfect. good. Thanks, Annie. The first reading, uh, which isn't a vote, but just a first reading of policy KF, the updates to building use. And that's Tara, I think, is going to let the school committee know. All right. And should she um, update us at this juncture or later? Sure. later during the, okay, sure, we great. can go right into school committee reports after that because that sounds next. great. Yep. Sure. Um, so um, we have reviewed the community use of facilities and fields, um, and there were really only two adjustments to that policy. It's linked in the agenda there for you. Um, and I think the two adjustments are highlighted. Um, so looking at the use under line number four of priority, other nonprofit, Hadley Youth Organizations, Parents, school groups and other youth activities, um, we simply added the name Cal Ripken to that list. There was a, a request to have that um, called out specific. So, so that has been added. Um, other than that, there's no change in that area. And then one, the only other change to the policy um, is down when you look on I don't know what page is, page six, um, the user, the um, Custodial fee column there, it previously had designated um, times laid out. So simply the times were removed on there and just placed as during normal staffing hours. So there's no designated times Monday through Friday, seven to nine. It just is in during normal staffing hours. Um, as far as all the other information that goes in there for rates and whatnot, it, it all remains the same. Um, so those were the only two changes. If there were any questions, um, this is first reading. Great. Thank you, Tara. Um, if there are, are there any questions on that first reading? Would there be any questions? Does, um, I'll, we'll entertain them at this moment, Christine or Paul. Not for me. Nope. Thank you. Not for me either. So okay. this will come back next month for, for second reading and approval then. Totally. Um, and then um, policy. Um, so Humera, <clears throat> excuse me, Humera and I met tonight, um, quickly reviewed that policy again that now came through for first reading. Um, last month um, when we reported out to you guys, um, we talked about the fuel efficient vehicle policy that was presented to the school committee. Um, and at this point, we'll, we'll be waiting um, to hear more back from the town until the select board has time to review. So that'll be brought back at another meeting in the future, um, not possibly not next meeting. Um, and then um, 
I guess next, next, next month, um, the school, uh, the new policy committee um, will be reviewing the um, sexual harassment policy and discrimination policies. Um, and we'll hear more next month from that. Terrific, thank you, Tara. Okay, moving on um, to other school committee reports and discussion items. We have Ethan on finance, Ethan's not here. Annie, is there anything we should know about finance? Yeah, I could report for him and there's nothing to report. So great, thank you again. Big thank you to the town of Hadley at annual town meeting for supporting the school department budget and supporting all of our capital projects. The town is incredibly generous to the schools. We don't take that lightly and we thank you very much. Thank you town uh, for your continuous support of the Hadley schools. All right, we um, have checked off policy, CES, um, Heather, um, I believe Heather could not go to the last meeting. I know they um, send executive director reports um, around, I don't think I have one in my inbox. Um, we should probably let the executive director know that Ethan is now the um, point person, Ethan, that will require uh, that you, Tara. Tara. sorry, Tara, Tara said, apologies, yeah. Tara. <laughs> well, um, so Annie, if you wouldn't mind letting them know that Tara's yeah. in that role and Tara, it'll require you to um, take an online class um, that's legally required by the state for that role. So um, thank you for taking that. I think there's a certain amount of time that you have to do that, but it's quite easy and makes sense to get it out of the way um, right away. Um, and then the last school committee report discussion item is fields and capital. Paul. So, and I um, haven't received any new information. I don't know, Annie, if you have. I apologize. Yeah. No, don't don't apologize. So we are still um, we're still sorry. I'm just emailing CES to let them know about the change. So we are uh, still waiting for those uh, that the specs for the cost estimate rather for phase two of the fields. Carlos does know, uh, Berkshire Design does know our timeline and that we have to have you folks with eyes on this no later than July so that we can be prepared to go before the CPA in September when they meet. Um, so they do know of our deadline, they're well aware of it, we just haven't gotten. That's a big thing that we're waiting for are the cost estimates for phase two. We'll bring that request to CPA and hopefully they can assist us with that. I'd like to thank Hadley Mothers Club. Hadley Mothers Club is profit for Steve Lewis Subaru, that event that they do every year. Now, um, some of what they raise, not all, but some of what they raise, uh, certainly they want to benefit the schools and um, specifically phase two of the fields projects. So we're very grateful in advance for them stepping up to do that. And then capital, as I said, um, we'll be having the follow-up meeting with Chip, and I'm very excited that they have somebody, well, MSBA is a big fan of that company, so it'll be nice to go through the recommendations with them and how they suggest we move forward. Great. Um, Annie, is there any worry on your part that Berkshire Design won't be able to meet the deadline, the window we need for? No, I'm not. I'm not I, I truly am not worried. I might start getting large beads of sweat on my brow slightly before that, but they will deliver. They always deliver. Okay. It'll be. It'll if, there's, if there's any anything that we can do to you know speed up that or, or assure that it comes through, let us know. Thanks. Great. Um, and then I think that's it for school committee reports and discussion items. We have an announcement. Um, yes, I just, um, and I want to credit Missy Aloisi for, um, thank you very much, Melissa Aloisi, excuse me. Thank you very much to her for recognizing, um, you know, people who serve our school district. I believe that Donald Pipchinski has been, um, for the most part, driven for our third party contractor, but he has served the students of Hadley in that role for a very long time. He's also helped with parades and other things in town. So mm. I'm glad that Melissa Aloisi brought this to my attention. I just wanted to thank him for serving our students for such a very long time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Melissa, for raising the, the item. And um, Duff is a fixture in our town, beloved by so many. Um, is, is, no, is that, uh, Christine, you looked at me like that's not, it's not Duff. There, is Duff, Duff and Donald two different people? <laughs> yes, Donald is um, Duff's cousin. 
Oh my goodness. There's two D. Yeah. Pipchinskis. There's a lot of Pipchinskis. Well, I know there's a lot of Pipchinskis, um, yes. but I, I, I don't believe I've made, I don't, I'm not sure I've met, I've met Donald. Well, anyways, congratulations, Donald Pipchinski. Um, and thank you for serving our students for 50 years. Perfect. That was the only announcement I had. I don't know if there's anything with Hadley Learns or anything else. But. Um, I don't have any announcements to make today. Um, how about any of my colleagues, Tara, Paul? What Christine? about the uh, parade? Are we doing the parade? Yeah. Okay. So I should, <laughs> that's, that's a big announcement, Paul. Yes, I should point out the Chow Memorial Day Parade, but I'm sorry, I have to pull up on the website right now to give you more details. I don't the know. 29th at 2 p.m. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, in the past when it's operated, we've we've marched. Are we are we doing that? Throwing that's out candy? A, that's a really good point. Um, I think we should. It's been a couple of years. I completely forgot that that is something that we do in light of the fact that COVID put a halt to all of that. I would love to march with you all. Um, I'll be there. I'll buy candy. Um, uh, as much as I've tried to increase the amounts of candy that I've purchased, I always seem to run out towards the end. So uh, those who would like to join, be sure That's to bring right. There's lots never of candy. Enough. There's never enough. You're right, Hamer. That's so true. Yeah. Never enough. Paul, will you be there? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to be there. It'd be great. Awesome. I'll awesome. Be there with candy. Terrific, awesome. Christine. How about you, Tara? Should, I should be able to make it. I should be able to make it. Do we know what time we need to arrive? I forget. I mean, typically, if you just get there 10 minutes early, we just line up and, you know, we're in the middle of the pack. Right. We start at the American Legion. Right. Um, and then march from there. And there's usually a banner. Um, I'm not, I've never, I'm not sure how we get, uh, do, do, am I recalling correctly that there is some kind of Hadley Schools banner? I've never given you a Hadley Schools banner the town may have. Right now, I'm emailing the town administrator and I'm copying all of you um, and letting them know that you are uh, interested in, you plan on being there to march and being at the Legion early. Terrific. And, and actually, now that I think about it, the banner could have been just been for the 350th. And so forget that I even mentioned banner because okay. I don't ever recall holding a banner. Um, certainly, if there was a banner, we could probably recruit a couple of fine students to hold a banner while we throw candy. Um, but and if you could find out and let me know, that'd be great. Yeah, I am. Um, I just terrific. And I will be sure to um, let Ethan know as well. Perfect. All right. Um, action items. Approval of the minutes of April 25th. Do I hear a motion? So moved. And a second? Seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Approval of AP warrants for April 2022. Now, is this the one, Annie, that... Yeah, so it used to be that Heather couldn't, so you can all vote on this. The reason they're still separated out is that Paul still can't. Uh, he has to abstain from payroll. And the reason for that, Christine, because you're new to this, is because uh, Paul's wife is the one of the nurses in our uh, weekly COVID testing program. So she's on the payroll, which is why he has to abstain from that vote. Right. Okay, so approval of the AP warrants, which we can all 2022 AP warrants. Do I hear a motion? So moved. And a second. second. Terrific. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and the approval of the payroll warrants, which uh, Paul will abstain for April 2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. And a second? I, I saw your lips move, Christine. Mm -hmm. Are you on mute? No. Oh, okay. Oh, you, did you second that? Yeah, I did. Second. Okay, terrific. Um, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, terrific. And uh, we already approved the European trip um, and we're holding on the breakfast and lunch price conversation. Mm -hmm. Next meeting dates. Um, so June. Oh, June. Why do I have that like that? Why do I have that like that? Um, um, because there has to be a reason. Uh, I think it is because that last, the fourth Monday, um, 
I think I was going to one, two, three. The fourth Monday is the 27th. And all of the administrators are in lose vacation mode. So I think I was hoping to see if we could meet on June 20th instead while school is still in session. And uh, I can say that that works for me. I am, uh, I'm able to do that. Um, so Monday, June 20th. Um, how about the rest of my colleagues? Tara? Works for me as far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I may be late to that, to that. I, I may have to be late. Okay. Thankfully there won't be a policy meeting for you to come in early to. And Christine, how does that work for you? Fine for me. Okay. All right. I think that's, I appreciate that. That would allow hopefully us to take that last week of June off. Okay, perfect. That's why that was there. And then I do have a vote for executive session for you folks, and we would reconvene in, OSHA, in open. And it is brief. It is just to discuss holidays of some employees that are covered by collective bargaining agreements and some who are not 10-month employees. And we will reopen or will we? You will reconvene because if you do uh, decide to um make some changes to that, you have to vote it in open session. So you have to roll call into executive, we'll come back out and then take a vote uh, if you choose to in open session. Great, and Annie, do you wanna make a breakout room for us while I read this? Uh, yeah, that would be great. I am going to do this and I'm gonna do it well. Okay, <laughs> let me know if you need help. Um, so move to go into executive session to discuss contract negotiations with non-union personnel and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares and to reconvene an open session. This is a roll call vote. Brueger. Yes. Pfeiffer. Yes. Pipchinski. Yes. And Fasiodine, yes. Okay. okay, so Humera, I created the room. I checked everybody um, in the school committee to go there. Now I'm gonna hit open all rooms, right? And will and I go? And no, um, if you don't go, Annie, then I can, uh, then, then just, click join breakout. You can see all the rooms. Okay. And then you click join for hours. And if you have any trouble, I can come back and help you. All right, we'll give it a whirl. See you in a minute. Okay, great. So we are um, reconvening after executive session. Um, do I hear a motion to, um, uh, to approve President's Day and Patriot's Day pay for uh, hourly the for hourly. all HBS employees, for all Hadley Public School employees. For all Hadley Public Schools employees. So moved. Okay. Seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Great. terrific. Thank you, everyone. Um, do we now need to adjourn? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Seconded. All right, all in favor? All right. Aye. Well done, guys. Record timing. Christine Pipchinski, you live in the right community. You picked the right town to be on school. Six thirty-two. <laughs> look at that. Move to Northampton. We'll right be up till midnight. <laughs> <laughs> welcome again, right. Christine. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, everybody. welcome, Christine. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.